Hey everybody, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 16 to see how accurate all the science and technology in the TV show really are. The exam to actually become an astronaut is absolutely ridiculous. Less than 1% of people who actually like apply and test out end up becoming astronauts themselves and going into space. They have requirements for your um, education, your physical health, your mental health. You need to have a proper resting heart rate. You need to have a proper max heart rate. There's a lot of things that just go into like this astronaut's exam before you even get there. Like you can be too tall to be in space. You can be too short to be in space. Like if you're physically not healthy, then you're automatically disqualified. Like before they even know about your education level, your experience, and you also have to learn languages. I, th I think nowadays you need to learn Russian to actually get into space. Before even taking like the astronaut's exam for like your uh, physical health, like you, you have to swim a lot, you have to scuba dive, and you have to like jump out of it. Look, there's a whole lot of things that you have to do before they even consider you. But like just the application process itself is like, are you this height? Are you this weight? Are you all this? And just that there excludes a lot of people. <laughs> That's so mean, man. It's the electro training suit from hell. What an interesting strategy, though. I mean, like, so what's going on is like the suit is sending electrical impulses through his muscles, which is forcing some of them to contract and causing others to relax. And that's pretty much making him swim or do whatever he's trying to do right there in the water. The whole point of this suit is so that Senku's father develops muscle memory so when he gets to the actual exam, he can just go ahead and do it without even thinking. However, that, like, it, this is just not how the human brain or our neurons work. You can't, like, force muscles to contract and then have your brain memorize that. Like, what, what you need to do is, like, before you develop muscle memory of any sort for, like, anything really in life, you need to first teach your brain what needs to happen. Like, you have to move in such a way that your brain understands the sequence of muscles that are contracting and relaxing, and the movement of your hands and legs, and you have to repeat this over and over again. Like, the, re the main reason that something like this would not work is because your brain does not know which muscles are going to be forced to contract next. Right now, all of his movements in the water are not controlled by him. Like, everything is controlled by the suit, so his brain doesn't actually know what's going to come next. For you to develop muscle memory, you have to go through the whole sequence of motions so your brain can record everything and then you can redo those actions. Oh, <laughs> This is something that I'm really happy that Dr. Stone got right because a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows just miss this really important detail. But look at their hair. Like you can see that it's all floating, right? That's actually what happens to your hair in space. But if you watch a lot of movies, they just have their hair like just down for like women naturally. But it, it wouldn't. Like it, when you're on Earth, gravity is pulling your hair down. But when you're in space, it, it should just float all around you. Most astronauts will cut their hair before going into space, but I mean, that can only work so well because while you're up in space, like your hair is still growing, like your body is still performing all of its natural functions and motions. If you were to comb your hair in space, you would have to comb it up, not down like you would on Earth, because the only way for you to actually like get get every strand of your hair like the way that you want it to, you have to like literally spike it up and then comb like straight because there's no other way for you to like orient your hair so that it stays in one place. This is I mean, probably a very very minor detail 
but I mean, I've just noticed this throughout this episode. It, and I mean, this also might just be like something that the animators did on purpose, but in space, if you're not like strapped to a wall or to a chair or like in a sleeping bag, or I mean, like all three of these, like, uh, well, actually everyone who's in the uh, International Space Station right now should be floating at all times. Like nothing is actually grounding you so that you stop moving. But what we're seeing here is that the only the person who's talking is actually like floating and moving. And I, I think that might just be like a, a way for um, whoever the animators of the actual TV show to show the audience who you should be paying attention to and who you shouldn't be paying attention to. But scientifically, everyone should be moving at all times. That that's really cool that the machine that they showed that actually like puts water into that bag of food that that's still the same machine that is used on the International Space Station today. Like e even down to like the, the colors of everything like that is the exact same machine that's used. I don't remember the time period which they said like that this was all going on. They might have said it in the first episode but I don't recall. I can tell you that dehydrated foods were like, I mean dehydrated foods to be used in space, that, that's pretty much all they had throughout the 1960s, but nowadays there's far more variety that you can bring up there. While you're in space, you have to be careful of certain foods that you can and can't bring. Like you, you, can't, you can't really bring food that leaves a lot of crumbs. Because unless you eat every last crumb, like they're just gonna float all around the space station and they might get stuck somewhere. Astronaut Chris Hadfield has the best videos I've ever seen of an astronaut actually explaining like how life in space works. He's he has like a whole YouTube channel and I don't know if it's his, but basically he's uploading all these videos of him literally vlogging in space. And he's showing you like how astronauts like take a shower, how they eat their food how they go to the bathroom, how they move around, how they sleep. Like everything that we just take for granted on Earth and just assume like gravity is working at all times, like life is so completely different in space that you'd be really surprised down to the how you eat your food and just how you sleep every day. Like but when you're in space, your your back is literally up against the ceiling while you're sleeping. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, n not to play down the seriousness of what just happened in the show and like everyone on Earth is pretty much frozen in time now, but uh, what we just saw was like this girl crying, but your tears don't behave that way in space. The same astronaut I mentioned earlier, Chris Hadfield, has a video specifically about this actually, which I I'll show you like a clip of that right here. And like someone asked him like how do you cry in space right and because water has properties of cohesion and adhesion which means water is really really good at sticking to surfaces and it's also very very good at sticking to other water molecules like water really likes water and it likes to stick to surfaces it does it very well so when you actually cry and tears come from your eyes they don't float off they literally just stay on your face and because like on earth like when you cry, the gravity pulls your tears down towards the center of the earth. But when you're in space, there's no force that pulls your tears from your face while you're crying. So there's just like a big like bubble of water builds up right underneath your eye. And you pretty much have to wipe that off like with some sort of cloth or something. Otherwise, it'll never leave your face. And I realize everyone on Earth is like frozen in time. This is probably the worst moment of humanity and these people are stuck in space. But just to, to keep for scientific accuracy, I thought I would throw in a little like, like tier explanation there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found some value in the video and you enjoyed it. If you want to see more Dr. Stone, just go ahead and comment it down below. And if you want me to watch any other TV show or movie that I can commentate over, go ahead and let me know that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden. Question is, if you get a cloth dripping wet without gravity and you wring it out, What's going to happen? What will happen to a wrung out cloth? So, and I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth.